He doesn't want You're to answer the question. I'm not going to answer the question. Why because, wouldn't you answer that question? Because the you question is... You want to put a lot of new Supreme is, Court justices, the radical question, left... Will you who shut is up, your, man? Listen. Well, sir, don't the voters deserve to know no, where No, they don't. Deserve, I'm not going to play his game. He'd love me to talk about... And I've, I've already said something on, on Pat Corpat. He, President Roosevelt clearly had the right to send to the United States Senate and the United States Congress a proposal to pack the court. It was totally within his right to do that. He violated no law. He was legalistically absolutely correct. But it was a bonehead idea. Well, then, Senator Biden was very clear how he thought about court packing, adding justices to the Supreme Court. Now, President Biden has this commission studying that. But there are several Democrats who are launching a bill to add four U.S. Supreme Court justices to the court. Let's bring in our panel. Jonathan Swan, national political reporter for Axios. Morgan Ortega is former State Department spokesperson. And Trey Gowdy, former congressman from South Carolina. Trey, uh, Nancy Pelosi says she's not bringing up this bill. Uh, she's going to wait for the commission. But it does seem like it's just putting it out there. Brett, this is a gift from God. That is the only way to describe it. It has no chance ever of becoming law with the current Congress, but it will be used to bludgeon Democrat candidates in 2022, which is why you saw that motley group of only four that can't even wait for Biden's commission. So Republicans rejoice that Jerry Nadler is handling strategy for 2022. You're guaranteed to retake the House and the Senate. All right. Well, it all depends on doing away with the filibuster. This is a number of things that, that lynch to that, that tie to that. Uh, take a listen to Chuck Schumer, answer a question on that, and then the key vote, Joe Manchin. What do you see getting done in the Senate on, on a traditional sort of 60 vote margin? Well, as I said, we're going to try to work with Republicans wherever we can. But we must get bold change. And if our Republican friends block it, uh, we're going to put our heads together and figure out the best way to go. Everything's on the table. It's plain and simple. Whether it be packing the courts or ending the filibuster, I will not vote to do that. I will not vote to pack the courts, I think, and I will not vote to end the filibuster. Jonathan, uh, where do you think this goes? Well, Biden's tried to defer it with this commission. That was just, you know, him trying to buy himself some time. You know, the left is not really buying it. They're they're coming out and doing this regardless. But um, it all comes, as you said, it, it comes down to Joe Manchin. It's not just Joe Manchin that Kirsten Cinema also opposes eliminating the filibuster. But Manchin's the one who's very, very dug in on this issue. And when you talk to people who know him well, he, you know, he, he learned the Senate at the feet of Robert Byrd from West Virginia, and he talks about him with reverence. And it's just one of those things that he seems very, very dug in on. And he's put out an op-ed. He said it a million times on the record. I, I, I don't see any sign that he's softening on this issue whatsoever. But Democrats are going to come after him uh, to try to change that. I mean, with the yeah, H.R. 1, S. 1, the voting bill. Uh, OK, yeah, Brad, to what, to, Morgan, what, to what effect? It's West Virginia. I agree. I mean, it's, got, it's like it's a plus 40 for Trump. I mean, he he's Joe Manchin says, bring him on. Come down and campaign. It, it only helps me when when um, left wing activists come and pick at him in West Virginia. Yeah, that's right. Morgan. Yeah, I think uh, Congressman Ocasio-Cortez summed it up today uh, in a Fox News article that I was reading. She was quoted as saying, how does the current structure benefit us? And that is the attitude of the most liberal, liberal members of the Congress. And I've got to tell you, uh, this makes me think about the actions. Packing the court is the actions uh, that a two-bit dictator would take. This is something that we would see out of Ch uh, Chavez or maybe Maduro. Uh, this is undermining democracy. And in fact, when I was State Department spokesperson, if we had a fledgling democracy that was packing the court so a dictator could get their way, I would be issuing statements condemning this very behavior that we're seeing uh, from some members of the House and the Senate and the Democratic Party. This is this is very serious erosion of democracy. Uh, it's a very, very serious authoritarian behavior. And they're doing this quite simply because they do not control an institution that they think they need to control. So the logistics behind it don't make sense. They're going to get this passed, have four Supreme Court justices yeah. confirmed. It doesn't make any sense. Right. But somebody like Lindsey Graham was on our air today saying that this is about putting it out there. The commission comes out and people say, no, 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 we're not going to go for the four justices. We're going to do something else. Here's Ro Khanna on our air today. 
I rather take a different approach, which is term limits for Supreme Court justices, and I'm for term limits for members of Congress and senators as well. I have a bill that says 18 years you serve on the Supreme Court, and then you go back onto a circuit court. They shouldn't be there for 40 years, 50 years, uh, and I hope the President's Commission will look at that, but it seems to me that may be less polarizing at a time where our country is deeply divided. So there you go. It kind of advances the ball tray, and somehow the commission comes up with something else. Well, the Constitution doesn't say for life. It says for the period of good behavior. If Republicans really want to get worried about something, uh, go back and look at the, the, the terrible choices you've made. I mean, who gave us Brennan? Who gave us Blackman? Who gave us Warren? Who gave us Souter? I mean, if Republicans want to worry about something, get your own Supreme Court picks right. And, and the choices. Jonathan, what's the thing we're not thinking about? news was i just russia 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 i mean th th seriously th they're amassing troops around ukraine and and, and from what i'm un understanding you're setting up blood banks and things like that you never know if he's bluffing or not but they could well seize more territory in ukraine and you know it's going to be one of biden's potentially one of his first really serious tests and you know he's sending mixed signals he put out this sanctions package today uh which is less than meets the eye and they, they turned around navy ships that were heading uh towards the black sea there's no sense that they're going to obviously do anything militarily there so that's something i'm watching really closely yeah that's good we'll have many panels about that uh, when we come back panel tomorrow's headlines